Dear followers of our Lord Jesus Christ, God tests us with the challenge to test him. Look at what God says in this text that we're considering. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Challenges are a part of everyday reality. Little children challenge each other to a race. Let's see who can run the fastest. Teenagers may challenge each other to an arm wrestle, and spouses may challenge each other to a friendly game of cribbage. On the scale of things, those are not the most important challenges. But some challenges in life are much more significant and serious, and the one that we're looking at this morning is one of those crucial challenges of life. God challenges his people. God issues this challenge to his people that, that says, try me, test me, uh, see if I won't be faithful to you. Enter into this relationship with me and see if I will not bless you in ways that you cannot even imagine. God lays down the challenge. It's about giving. It's about faithfulness in response to his blessing, anticipating even greater blessings to follow. This morning we're going to take a look at that challenge. We'll, we'll look at the context in which, in the time of Malachi, God issues that challenge. And then we'll see the content of the challenge, just exactly what God says is going to be the test and the challenge. We'll look at the conclusion or the outcome of that in that day, and then the contemporary counterpart. That's kind of where it all comes down for us and where we really apply that to our lives and to that challenge today. But let's take a look at the context. Um, when we get to the book of Malachi, we're at that period in history where God has brought his people back out of exile, at least some of them, not all of them, but God has brought back a remnant out of exile, and they have restored the temple and the walls of Jerusalem. God has provided leadership through such names like Ezra and Nehemiah and Haggai and Zechariah and those kind of leaders, and, and now the prophet Malachi. And in that context, the temple is restored, but greater faithfulness is needed. God takes a look at these people, and, and you might think that, well, this is a wonderful time. Things are on the up and coming. Renovations have taken place. The walls of the city are restored. The temple is back into, into structure. The economy is starting to kind of turn around again after difficult times. But God takes a look at his people, and he says, now there's something that's desperately lacking. And the people in this dialogue in the book of Malachi say to God, what, what are you talking about? And God has challenged them a number of times and they respond and they, they kind of have a rebuttal. And God says, you're robbing me. And the people say, what are you talking about? We're not robbing you. And God says, you're robbing me. He says, bring the whole tithe. Bring the, the whole first 10%. Don't give me the leftovers. Greater faithfulness is needed. God says, put me to the test. God says, I'm challenging you this day. Do you want to see how gracious I can be? Do you want to see how generous I can be? Do you want to see how I can bless you in ways that, that you have never been blessed before? Let's start small and let's up the ante. Bring in the first tenth and next year I'll give you more. 
You prove yourself faithful, I'll give you more. And you bring that in. And we'll do it again. And we'll do it again. We'll, we'll keep building. And let's see where this goes. God has put me to the test. But in essence, he's really putting the people to the test because the question is, will they trust God enough to just give him 10%? Will they, will they trust God enough to, to take 10% and give it to God and take the other 90% and use that for their own investment, their own business, their own food, their own daily needs and requirements and for giving gifts and all of that kind of stuff? Will they test their own hearts in that. That's the context. The nation is being restored, but there are challenges and there are questions. Where are we going to go now? And, and will this people embrace the vision of God or will they live simply selfishly for themselves? Are they going to grow? And will they be a blessing to the nations? When God called Abraham, he said, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing to the nations. Are they ready for that? Are they ready for that? That's the question. That's the context. And then the content of the challenge. God says, bring the tithe. That is, go out there and gather and bring it in. God is really saying in that, step out in an act of faith. You see, God is not saying, wait until everything's harvested and then set aside the seed that you'll need for next year and then take what you need to live off of for the year and put that aside and then maybe take some of it and sell that so you've got some furniture for your house and then if you've got something left over, bring it to me. God's not saying that. God says, give me the first fruit. Give me from the first, first stage of harvesting. And, and give me the best. Don't give me broken goldfish. Give me your gummy bear. God is saying, give me the best. And see, if you honor me that way, see what I'll do for you. The tithe was an act of worship. It was not only an act of faith, knowing that God would come through, it was an act of worship. You see, when they brought the offering, that said something about their respect for God. The kind of offering that they selected said something about their appreciation to God. If they had to bring a calf, and you think, well, this is a cripple, and it's never going to amount to much, and it's maybe it's good enough for God, what does that say about God? What does it say about honoring God? The gift says something about priorities and respect. I, I heard a story one time about, um, and this was from a missionary, true story, not made up, true story. This missionary was in Africa. And he said, we got a care package in the mail. And in that care package, we had, get this, recycled tea bags. There was a note that said, we used these bags once, but they can probably be used again. So we set them aside and saved them for you. We dried them out, put them in the package, and you can safely use them once more. Now, do you think the missionaries who received recycled tea bags from wealthy people were honored by that? I dare say no. In fact, I know they weren't. They said they weren't. They were insulted. Rightly so. It was an insult to them. And that's kind of what God is saying. If you bring me your leftovers, if you bring me uh, what you think you don't need or what you don't want anymore, 
I'm insulted, but God says there's a better way. Right up front, honor me. He says to the Israelites, honor me with the best of your offerings. It's finally also an act of generosity. You see, God, God says that there may be food in my house. God doesn't need to eat. God doesn't need to eat. God doesn't need steaks. And God doesn't need um, barley loaves. God says the cattle on a thousand hills are his. God doesn't need the food. So what's God referring to? Well, the temple was the place where the offerings would be collected and part of that offering would be used uh, simply to maintain the temple and part of it would be for the support of the priests and the Levites who were servants there and part of the offering was for the social security of the people. Part of the offering was virtually the diaconal collection. And on the side of the temple were built storehouses and warehouses and grain would go in there and oil would go in there and the fruit of the land would go in there so that the priests could help the needy people. God is saying, I've got this, I've got this glorious vision, people. This is what I'm thinking. God says, bring me your generous offerings as an act of faith, and I promise you, you'll never be lacking. Bring me your offerings as an act of worship, and I will be honored, and we will have a, a marvelous relationship in which I will continue to bless you and take care of your every need. God is saying, bring your offerings so that in generosity you can support the people that are needy in your midst so that there will be no more needy in your midst. You can support them. And I'll support you. That's what hinges in this challenge. Will they do that or will they not? Conclusion of the challenge, we're not really told exactly what happens here that particular year. We're told that the people made an agreement and they made a covenant and they saw the vision, they kind of saw the light. But we're not told that at the end of the year, the temple met its budget. We're not told that at the end of the year they did the ledger and there were so many tons of grain that were brought in and so many gallons of oil. And We're not told that. But we are told that there was a commitment. And the conclusion of that challenge makes us look forward because God talks about the fact that because of the response of the people, glorious things are going to happen and the nations around are going to see what the people are doing and what God is doing. We're left at that moment of anticipation. In the book of Malachi, eagerly looking forward to what God is going to do in the New Testament era, and there's a sense of expectancy that God is going to, as he promised, open the floodgates of heaven. Did they balance the budget that year? We're not sure. But we need to see the big picture. God will do glorious things. And in fact, that's exactly what God does uh, following after this era after a period of dryness, after a period of waiting and, and longing and anticipation, God throws open the floodgates of heaven. He sent his son. He poured out his spirit. He did things for his people that no storehouse could ever hold. God's blessings through the Messiah, through Jesus, were unimaginable. God, in his graciousness, says, even though you failed at times, even though you didn't always come through, I'll bless you in ways that are unparalleled. And he sent Jesus restoring relationship, the center of worship, uh, the, the opportunity to be a blessing to other people. So the contemporary counterpart 
And sisters and brothers in Christ, I hope that you've already been making the analogies and making the comparisons and making the applications, but let's spell it out for a moment. God say, says to us today to bring your offerings. Bring your offerings. And he does that not as a punishment and not as a reprimand. He does it as an invitation and as a challenge. And it is a glorious invitation. It is a marvelous invitation. I want you to think back to the children's message for a moment. When Roseanne was handing out $50 bills, who wouldn't want to be in Matthew's shoes? If you ask for volunteers to come up to the front and receive 10 $50 bills, and only thing you need to do, only thing you need to do is give one of them back, how many people would volunteer? Wouldn't we all be saying, I'll do it. I'll do it. That's what God's offering us. God is saying, come up to the front. Stand in front of me as one of my children. And I'm going to start handing you 50s and hundreds and thousands. And all I'm asking is you give back the tithe. Give back the tithe because you have faith that I'm going to keep on blessing you. Give back the tithe because you love me and you want to worship me and you want to honor me and you don't want to give the leftovers but you want to, you want to show how much you appreciate the coming of Jesus Christ and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Give back the tithe. Because this is why Jesus came and this is why the Holy Spirit came to build a church that would be known for its generosity, a church that would be a light to the community, a church that, that the surrounding people would see and they would say, this is amazing. Look at how these people are living. They love God and they love their neighbor. That's the challenge that God is giving us today. God is testing us. He's saying, this is, this is your opportunity. How will we respond to the challenge? There's a number of options, of course. We can, we can say, I don't trust it. I really don't trust it. I've learned in life that if it sounds too good to be true, it's too good to be true. And if God says, trust me in this, I, I don't trust him. Don't trust him. It sounds too good to be true. I think it's a trick. Or we can say, well, I'll come. I'll try it once. And I'll see how much God gives me. And then maybe after the end of it, I'll do the tally and I'll see how much I want to give back. Or we can simply say, yes, Lord, we're in. We're in. This marvelous opportunity that you're giving us, this marvelous, un unbelievable privilege where God is saying, come my child, stand in front of me. Here we go. And I'll up the ante. I'll give you this much this time. Be faithful in the tithe. I'll increase it. Those who are Faithful with little, God says, will be entrusted with more. So how will we respond to the challenge? That challenge to receive from God and be generous. That challenge to catch the vision of God and realize that there's a, a, a fantastic opportunity to teach that way of salvation to the world in which we live. God has already done his part. Will we do ours? God is challenging us. Test him. And see if he won't do what he promised. God says, test me. Test me today. Let's pray.
Dear Father in heaven, what a, what a challenge it is to exercise our faith in that way. To take that promise at face value. To believe that every word you say is true. What an opportunity. What a glorious opportunity. Lord, make us faithful in the little things, in the choices, in the priorities of life. Make us faithful as we honestly count our blessings and show our gratitude in our tithe. Father, what an opportunity you give us to make your name glorious in this community. Father, you are ever faithful. Help us to be faithful too. To see that vision. To catch that joy. To live that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.